Impotence is the name given to a condition where a man cannot get or maintain an erection in circumstances in which one would normally expect it. In other words, when he's sexually aroused and in a situation where you would expect sexual arousal to flow naturally and for a man to get an erection. It's a very common problem. Probably affects at least one in ten men up to the age of 50. After 50 it becomes much more common. So that by the age of 70, approximately 70% 70 of men would, would have considerable problems getting and maintaining erections. It's a very worrying condition for most men because it seems in our culture at least, and if not in all cultures, men place a great emphasis on, on sexual performance and their ability to have sexual intercourse and to maintain an erection. Obviously, it's part of that. Um, it has, we don't know the exact incidence in Ireland because nobody has done any research, but if research from abroad has anything to go by, it is a very common problem. And it's certainly a very common problem in my practice. It's one of the most common ones I see. I, I tend to divide the people who suffer from it into two groups because in, generally in young people, the problem is associated with different causes than in older people. Now it's not black and white and completely different, but there is a bit of an overlap. But generally, the problem has different causes in young people than in older people. Now, that meant th at the mildest end of the scale, let's say, most men at some stage in their lives will lose an erection or not get an erection in a situation where you know, normally they, they would expect to. They'd say, oh, you know, in any other situation I've been in like this, I've gotten an erection, there's no problem. And then suddenly out of the blue, at least suddenly out of the blue in their mind, they don't get an erection and it's a complete puzzle. Now, people's reaction to it is, is very important. And I think for young men, it is very important that if it does happen seemingly out of the blue, in circumstances where normally it wouldn't happen, the most important thing is not to panic, not to make a big deal of it, because it should be expected at some times. Even though it mightn't seem obvious why it happens, everybody, every young person, should, ex young man should expect it at some stage. And if it does happen, don't get excited about it, don't obsess about it, don't talk endlessly about it, don't make a big deal of it, in other words, because if you do, it tends to ex exacerbate the problem. So the best thing to do is accept it. The things that happen, sometimes happens, laugh it off and move on. Now, it's a different story, obviously, if it becomes a chronic problem. And generally it does if, if the man becomes very concerned about it and thinks about it too much and obsesses about it, let's say. And most, most of the young men I'd see who suffer from impotence or erectile dysfunction, as we call it nowadays sometimes, uh, it's, it's, the cause is primarily psychological and not physical. Whereas as we get into the older age groups, it tends to be um, a more physical medical problem the causes are rather than psychological. So there's always an overlap between the two. There are lots of effective treatments for it. So lots of men wait years and years and years before they approach a doctor for treatment. And that is a mistake because the earlier it's treated, the more effective the treatment is and, and the quicker the, the intervention is. So any young man who, who's concerned about it in a, in a sense that it's not just a one-off and it doesn't just happen occasionally, but it becomes a problem that is ongoing or chronic, should try not to leave it for years and years and years before looking for help, because the earlier they look for help, the more effective the help is. It's also important that men, even young men, are assessed for medical problems that may be a contributory factor to the, to, to the impotence. And the old, and, I mean, psychological treatment obviously is part of it too, and that's the main part for young men who don't have a medical condition. Uh, sometimes young men attend psychosexual counsellors when, when they have this condition, on the assumption that it's psychological. And psychosexual counsellors in the main are psychologists, so they wouldn't be trained to deal with medical aspects. So generally it's advisable to have a medical checkup before you go for counselling treatment. But I think in some cases it's reasonable, especially in young men, that maybe they see a psychosexual counsellor first and explore the psychological aspects. And then if, if that's not making much progress, then to have a medical assessment. But a good guide for young men that the problem is not a medical, physical problem is if they still get morning erections, good morning erections, like they have done for, since puberty. Now, once we get over the age of 50, we begin to see the medical problems, physical problems come to the fore more. And the vast majority of men who suffer from impotence over 50, the problem is as a medical nature. And in most cases can be treated. Again, this, this is a condition that is eminently treatable. So no man need feel, you know, that 
once he suffers from it, even if it's a chronic condition, even if it's, even if it's caused by medical factors, that there is no treatment or no cure, because in most cases there is treatment that is very effective. Uh, I mentioned treatments earlier and there are a number of treatments and they range from obviously the psychological which is generally known as psychosexual counselling where the cause of the problem is primarily psychological if not only psychological. For, for, I mean, there are also other treatments can be used apart from psychosexual counselling even if the problem is primarily psychological though obviously counselling I think is the first and best option. Uh, the medical treatments available for impotence include a range of tablets which are very effective it includes injections of drugs, drugs which can be injected directly into the penis, um, drugs which can be inserted into the penis through the urethra, which is the tube you urinate through, and as a last resort, usually implants into the penis, which are mechanically op operated and, and given artificial erection. <laughs>